I'm honored to be here, but of course, I need to apologize for the one hour or so uh, lateness. I, I just came from Tugegarao, so I was invited uh, by the Archbishop of Tugegarao to help them out in their, uh, their problem there. Um, I was told that you've been doing this for almost six years, this kind of mission to the Tumagas, almost six years. Uh, but I have some questions to ask. Questions to ask before we proceed. Um, are, you, are you familiar with uh, the indigenous peoples right now? No, sir. Are you not familiar with it? So uh, you've been engaging with these indigenous peoples uh, that in fact you're not familiar with their rights as provided by you. Uh, okay. So perhaps one of the one of the things that you need to uh, to read about the indigenous peoples in the Tumagas is first to know their, their rights as indigenous people because they, are, they have their own law. And I don't know if you have uh, undergone some rituals or some uh, protocols when when you talk about engaging with the indigenous peoples because in the law before you go to their community or to their area, if they have customary laws, uh, you need first to secure a free, prior, and informed consent before you take any activity or you undergo any activity in their area, especially when it comes to you engage with them, you, you teach them how to, how to deal with the environment, that in fact, they know how to deal with the environment. So, well, environment, First, you will talk about. I, I saw your I saw your objectives and plans, and one of which is the uh, Kenyan system. Yeah, and you wish to help them out and deal with that kind of problem, if it is a problem in the community. And uh, you you ought to introduce some innovations in their in their living and their lifestyles for sustainable development. So we talk about two things. First is about the environment, and second is about introducing a kind of development that uh, you may ought to engage with in your school, in yourselves, at home, and in the community you ought to adapt. Or you're adapting, and that's the uh, Dumaga tribe. So, but uh, who are Christians here? Christians. Well, Christian? Catholic? So we're all Christians, we believe in Christ. So I have a, I have a story to tell you. But uh, anyway, my name is Rod, and I'm the district manager of the, uh, of the, uh, the former vice president of the board, and as vice president, and uh, the laureate. So I hold the Southern Peak District country. And uh, yeah, that's me. And I work also for Haribon Foundation, and I'm the executive director of uh, Cebu and Islands and also the Friends. A lot of areas because we wanted to, in a way, wanted me to share what I know. So I have a story to tell you about the environment. You want to hear the story? That story is about you and me, about what we believe in. You know the story of creation? Creation, story, Genesis. You know that? So when we talk about the environment, uh, deeply speaking, we talk about ecology. And ecology comes from the word oikos, which means household. It's a Greek word oikos, which means household. So, in the creation story, we have three parts. For seven days, we have three parts, three levels. Uh, from first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, God created, through His words, God created all of those things. These things, these tangible things, or what we call, or intangible things that we call creatures, creation, from day one to five, these things comprise what we call the household. Oikos. It is the home. Every day, at the end of the story, at the end of each day, God always tells himself. He told himself in every creation that he done. And it was good. Good. And he saw it was good. <laughs> so it was good. Yeah, it was good. 
Now, what is the deeper meaning of being good? What is good? What is goodness? When you translate it in the Filipino language, it is deeper. It belongs to a transcendental, you know, transcendental property which is deeper than goodness, deeper than the soul's universe. And if you translate good morning in Tagalog, in the Filipino language, what is that? Maganda. Maganda. You will not say mahuti. It is So, going back to elementary years, if you have, if you have thought uh, this kind of poem, all things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made. He gave us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great God made all things well. And these things, all together, is the audience. It is the earth. So the earth has been prepared, the household has been prepared, and on the sixth day, God got them. Little tiny soil or whatever you call it, to make persons, to create persons. We now enter into a new level, new part of that creation story, and that is what we call Oikos Nomos. Right now, right here, economy, our perspective of economy is misinformed. Because the original meaning of economy, its etymological meaning, is all about stewardship. God created persons, human beings, to maintain the balance, the beauty that has been created from day one to five. It is the management of the household. The economy is the management of the household. It doesn't mean that you have to abuse the household. If you say management of the household, it means you have to maintain the balance of the household. Just like in a corporate world, just like in a corporation, if you're a manager, if you're an economist, you should maintain the balance sheet. If you make a financial statement, it should be balanced. Everything should be put in order. Employer-employee relationship should be in harmony. And the real meaning of economy is to maintain is the management and maintenance of the balance of the beauty of the order of the houses, of the oil, of nature, of creation. But right now, if we say economy is all about money, it's all about investment, it's all about capital, it means it is looking at the creation of the oikos as subjects, meaning to say as mere subjects of our needs, mere subjects of our desires, mere subjects of, of extraction, utilization. The misinformation and the original meaning ceased when Adam and Eve, no, the third Christian, pinakela manila ang bawat. Because the household from day one to five has been sapat. What is sapat? Enough. It is enough for But because of greed, because of ah, this, this is beautiful, this beautiful tree, this beautiful fruit, and we wanted to put this, it's forbidden, but it's, so they decide for more, greed, disobedience, that is the beginning of it. However, after creating Adam and Eve on the seventh day, God rested, because he saw that all of these creations, including the oikos, including those who will manage the oikos, are all good, beautiful. However, the story of creation, the story of the greed, man cannot rest until human beings cannot rest. We cannot rest. Although we are so busy, we cannot say that we are in good condition. We wanted still to take vacation. It's like because we fail to maintain the balance, the order within the oikos.
it is imbalance, not beauty, not order, not harmony. And it is our role, right? It is the story of human With the indigenous peoples, they have been in contact with the others. They are the best preservers of the artifacts. However, because of some outside outlook that has been inculcated in their minds that this should be and not yours, they fail and they disconnected themselves to the maintenance management of the oikos. Dumaga, who are they? Can you tell me who are they? According to your studies. Yung mga nakatira po sa... <laughs> yun sa mga nabit po namin sa taas. Mm. Ng Rizal. Why were they called Dumagas? Tagadagat. Tagadagat. But why are they in the mountains? Uh, pinalipat po ng mga... I mean, po sa nabasa ko, pinalipat po ng mga other, parang other people na pinalipat sila sa bundok. So, da dati sa kapatagan sila. So, yun, pinalipat sila sa bundok. Parang conquer din, parang. So, they were forced to be disconnected from the world. From the world they have known. In, in, from, their, from their worldview. In, in German, you call that the bottom show. The, their worldview. So, the world changed. Because what they have been before was that they are in contact always with the sea. But why is it that they are now in the mountains? Because of greed. Because of greed. Because, because they were relocated because of some people's desire to own their land, to own their oikos. And Eat up, eat up their oikos, the world, the earth, their sea, the seashore. They know how to catch fish. They know how to hunt for fish. But when they went up to the mountains, they adjusted again. But the big question is that why are they still surviving despite of the relocation of despite of this unfortunate thing? If they own the land, I own this, I own this not, I own this, I own this not. They can still survive. Because they can still adapt. And they know their world. 